Hi everyone and welcome to the final portion, part three, of our tutorial on creating shareable data sets. So you've gone through all this work and you've downloaded true data in part one, you've created either a code book or a data dictionary in part two, now we're on to the sharing to create fully open data sets. So for kind of popular sites open to show you how you might upload these kind of things and um, freely share them. And at the end, we'll also talk about Google dataset search. First one here is the Open Science Framework. So I've got an account on the Open Science Framework, and here's the project I'm currently working on. Um, but let's say I wanted to start a new project to share this information. So this is a very, very short tutorial of, of OSF. They have tons of tutorial materials um, on how best to use their site. But in the very simplest form, you can create a project give it a title okay, where I would share this information and I could actually go ahead and enter a description. So I could say this is an example tutorial and I don't really have a template so I'm just going to hit create. Once you create that you can click go to project and here you can fill in all kinds of information. You can add your contributors that would be the people that also made this data set or are part of this project. You can actually create a component, which is where people suggest you kind of break down the, the study. So you might have a component that's for the paper, a component that's for the data, a component for the materials. So you, the way you use OSF is kind of dependent on your favorite, um, your favorite uh, workflow, but there's lots of ways to do this. You can also write a description about your project. If you wanna learn more about licenses that we talked about in the last section, you can actually figure out what kind of license you'd want to use. Kind of gives you examples. And then once you have uh, a bit more information, you can actually create a DOI, which allows you to uh, link to the data set with a, a static marker that you could use on your metadata. So it might help if you build this site before you actually upload, finish building the metadata. Um, but we've talked about this as sort of the last step as well. Yep. So I could enter a change my description, etc. I think you can only make the DOI if you make it public. All right, so to, store, uh, to upload the data, I could just click here on OSF storage, click upload. I can also just highlight everything I have off screen here and drag and drop. And what I've done is just uploaded everything we've created. So I'm uploading the code book, uploading the CSV since that's more usable. I've uploaded the SPSS file and then all the information that was created from the data dictionary. So I kind of went overboard here, but you could at least minimally upload a data set, right? And um, the code book or the data dictionary. So the JSON is the important part to get indexed, um, but it's nice also to have the human readable format in HTML. And then there's lots of other things you can do with OSF. You can add tags to help your search. You can um, also do some um, different settings. You can add contributors. So this is kind of the very brief explanation of where you might put this sort of thing to be able to, to share it. And then when you're done, you click make public. Okay, and that will allow other people to see it. Another option is Zenodo, or Zenodo. And this is not one I've used a whole lot, but it's really useful if you want to do something that updates continuously. So let's say you have a data set that updates every, every couple of months, or you're wanting to, to create a project that people are contributing to, and people maybe want to have um, know which data set you're using. So this is really great for versioning when you have multiple versions of something um, because you can kind of post updates and each update gets a new uh, digital object identifier DOI. So for example, this first one that has popped up on my screen here has what version it is. So it's a, a data archive and they have, they've released it, so you can uh, download this data, it's quite large. Um, and they have over here, what's happened at each stage of their project. So it looks like they're uploading approximately monthly in 2018. 
and um, you can see use the DOI for whichever version you pick. So this is really useful if you have data that um, maybe you're going to update. It's also very easy to work. You click upload. Okay, click new upload. And then you just drag and drop. Okay, and then it'll allow you to also fill in some information about the project itself. So where should it go? What is this? So you can do presentations because you've never known what to do with your PowerPoint from a presentation. This is a good place to put it. So is OSF. Is it a data set? Right? Is it a journal publication? You can make yourself a DOI. You can add your title. So this actually allows you to enter much of the metadata as well um, that you've had from before. You don't have to, but you can enter it again so that um, it gets tagged multiple times. Of course, you pick a license, it does funding. So you'll notice that this looks very similar to a lot of the things that we did in the data dictionary creator. Um, however, this when you enter a data set, it doesn't allow you to describe each column. So this uh, will allow you to do a lot of the bibliography information, but maybe not the information about each uh, level of column four. Another one that I've seen a lot of people use that I've never used myself is Figshare. It says Figshare. <laughs> But uh, many of the data sets that are indexed on Google are also here, and it works very similarly. Once you sign up, there's an upload button, and it actually looks very similar to Zenodo. And then for the most brave, I would say, is GitHub. GitHub allows us to have sort of projects, so we can go and look at the one actually for the app here. Um, that allows me to put into folders the, the applications, or uh, I've used this for complete publication projects where I have a folder for the manuscript and a folder for um, the, the analyses and a folder for the data. And I would just want to make sure I upload all the same files for this sort of thing too. GitHub calls them a little bit differently. They're repositories. Okay. And so I would go to my repository page. Just think of this, I think of this as project personally. Um, people use these in a lot of ways. So click new. I would give it some sort of name. Okay. Could give it a description, if it's public or private. Okay. Generally you'd want this public if you wanna share. And then you just hit create. I'm not gonna just upload the files. So all four of these are very usable, very user friendly um, to create a space for your project and then upload the files for your project. With the ultimate goal of sharing for other researchers. So you could link to it um, on your CV, like here's the publication, here's the project, or hopefully um, after a little bit, it does take somewhere between like seven days and a month for this to happen. But once you um, upload this sort of this sort of data that has the machine readable format in the background, because the uh, codebook and data dictionary JSON LD files are formatted specific to getting into Google Dataset Search, which is part of um, schema.org's dataset format, is to end up here. Right. So in our paper, we searched for resilience. If I can spell it correctly. And what you'll see here is um, not the first one that came up when we did this before, uh, but here's a new one. And so you can uh, look at the results found here. And then once your paper has been um, percolated through the internet for a while, your information will also end up here. So it pulls the information from the JSON LD to help on tell you what this data set is. So then I could go to the data set or explore at fix share here. And then now I can download these, these data sets. Okay, so here there are four different ones and um, we could download all. So this doesn't have to all be data. These could be multiple files. So I can have my S, uh, SPSS format, my CSV format and the, the code book for it, for example. And then I can read more about the study and how I might cite it. So that is four different ways that you can share. There are more, but these are kind of the big, the most popular four. And a very quick tutorial on Google Dataset Search. And once you have that kind of data shared, um, 
you can actually follow the data itself and see what other people are, are doing with it. So you can actually keep track of, of who's citing your data and who's looking at your data um, using their, their uh, search page information. So that's the end of our tutorial on how to um, going from the very start of creating, of taking your data off a popular website. Um, you can also have data that you've made like in a lab with Inquisit or ePrime. You know, there's lots of ways that data gets created. But just for example, taking it off of Qualtrics, running it through one of the apps, the tools to help you follow the rules, and ending up with sharing it online. And now you've made your first open shareable data set.